so we're going to talk about computer security. Uh, this is quite a broad area of topics um, to encompass a number of aspects of computer security and uh, so it's a bit of a sort of eclectic collection of, uh, of things to talk about. Uh, so I'm going to start talking about threats. Um, backup I think is very important so I put that right at the top of the list and then we'll talk about all the usual things like malware and uh, antivirus software updates, passwords, multi-factor uh, bit of work on scams, uh, network safety, uh, safe browsing, which I think is uh, also quite important, but uh, uh, that's more sort of practice. Data management and uh, closing your internet ports and VPNs, which is uh, a bit of a scam in my way of thinking. Uh, this, uh, uh, this list of topics is actually similar to uh, something Brad, uh, Victor Alpha 7 Bravi Whiskey X-Ray did a little while ago and I did use his um, his information as a checklist to uh, help prepare this. Uh, I uh, also need to acknowledge that uh, there are a few people on this call probably who know as much if not more than I do and uh, and so there's a lot of other expertise in here and there may be maybe some different opinions on uh, things and the best practices but uh, I think at this level um, any <laughs> anything we can do is going to be an improvement and um, a lot of it's just common sense uh, but it's also good to get reminders of um, uh, things we should be doing if we haven't done them for a while so with that I'm going to move on and uh, first talk about threats so going back in sort of the dim and distant past, we used to talk about script kiddies, people who were just having fun by um, seeing what they could do. Uh, the, the sort of uh, classic hacker. Uh, hacker actually is, uh, uh, is, is used now to denote somebody who's doing harm, but originally it was somebody who could do clever things um, by uh, exploiting hacks in, uh, in the code. And um, nowadays, well, I don't know if ScriptKit is around, but uh, but that's not what's happening with the, the bad things happening on computers. It's now organized crime and it's state sponsored um, attacks and uh, it's quite serious business. Uh, it may also be negligence on your part. Uh, things go wrong, uh, computers fail and we need to protect ourselves from our own uh, computers that don't work and uh, and just doing things that we shouldn't have done that got us into trouble. Uh, also there's the point of the uh, the emergence of now what we're calling the Internet of Things or IT which is uh, where people are using a lot more appliances in their home uh, so things like security cameras and uh, what else we've got door openers and alarms and all sorts of other things uh, which are also exploitable and um, uh, when uh, when you were talking earlier about uh, Linux being safe, well, um, a lot of those devices are not safe and could be exploited. So uh, we need to pay attention to those as well. So uh, this is no longer people doing it for fun. It's being done for profit and warfare, which is uh, the nature of the business. Uh, where these threats come from, uh, they're usually outside of your computer. Uh, so come over the internet, uh, may come in through Wi-Fi if you've not protected that, uh, maybe Bluetooth, and it may be uh, external media that you have and you're plugging into your computer. Um, all of those we need to uh, watch out for. So I think the most important thing that we need to do is backup, and that's why I have this right at the top of the list. And uh, there are a number of stories I have of people who have lost data and uh, uh, this, this saying at the top, uh, there are two, <laughs> two types of people, those that have lost data and those who will. Um, and which are you? And I've heard of other people uh, losing photographs. That seems to be quite common. Uh, people not backing up and the computer fails and it's gone and it's irrecoverable. So uh, we have to do a, uh, backup and if you haven't done backup recently you should do it tonight or tomorrow and don't leave it. Uh, the best backup uh, I think is one that's done automatically so you don't have to think about it you don't 
say I'm going to do it sometime it's it just just happens uh, but you can do it manually uh, but you have to be really disciplined to do that uh, you can do backups incrementally or you can do a complete backup you've got lots of choices you can do it continuously you can do it daily you can do it weekly uh, whatever time frame you want monthly or annually uh, the uh, in the bottom here I've got this this three to one rule the the best practice or uh, the, the recommended practice is you have th at least three copies of your data on two different types of media and one of those copies should be off site uh, so for me I um, I have one copy on my computer here uh, my laptop I have a USB drive which is actually on the computer upstairs and uh, I do two backups I do a daily backup and I do a weekly backup to that uh, computer so the daily backup is uh, is just a um, um, uh, an update uh, the weekly backup is a full backup of of the files that I'm trying to save I don't back up the whole computer but just just the things that are important and then I also use um, uh, as a continuous backup and off-site uh, I use uh, one drive which is Microsoft's cloud storage and uh, that um, uh, that just uh, keeps everything in sync so whatever I've got on my documents on my computer is in the cloud and that I think is is fairly reliable um, I have to be a little bit careful with with these synchronous backups because if you have a problem you don't want all your backups to uh, be synchronously getting the same problem uh, which is why I also have the the backup that I do daily and weekly so I've, I've got some checkpoints I can go back to if something catastrophic happens uh, the other thing I should say about uh, backups is it's important to make sure you can restore them there's no point in having a backup if when you come to use it it's not there uh, and I experienced this just recently because my phone uh, I dropped my phone and I thought I would um, no problem I'm doing backups on my phone uh, I was backing up I was only doing a single backup to Google um, whatever the Google service is the Android backup standard uh, backup and in fact um, when I came to do the restore it wasn't there uh, so uh, now I check that <laughs> it is backing up properly uh, and the result of that was um, I couldn't move to another uh, well it wasn't worth moving to another phone I uh, I had to get the phone repaired uh, which cost me about three hundred dollars because I just couldn't face having to start over again with a blank slate feel free to ask questions or butt in uh, so moving on malware uh, there uh, people often talk about viruses but we don't talk about viruses anymore because viruses are just one type of a general category of nasty stuff that we call malware uh, so you can see some of the ones here um, uh, there are some very nasty ones um, those were the ones I was going to list on the left but I forgot one of the most important which is ransomware uh, so the the common things that happen these days again thinking uh, these guys are doing this for money they're not doing it because they want to just cause harm uh, but they're going to uh, uh, get you to pay up so ransomware is where uh, basically they encrypt everything on your um, all of your documents all of your, the, the things that you want that are important on your computer and basically they will offer to sell you the decryption key and hopefully they're reputable well no actually hopefully they're not reputable because you don't really want to pay up um, what you want to do is go to your backup and restore from backup and uh, get that nasty uh, malware off your machine um, but there are um, there are cases where people or companies have paid millions if not billions of dollars uh, in ransom because um, it, they had to because they would, would be out of business otherwise uh, so that's particularly nasty stuff uh, zero day exploits are, are nasty uh, usually uh, you want to make sure that your computer is up to date um, you've got some sort of antivirus running and uh, you're maintaining the software so you're patching it regularly uh, th but the zero day exploit is something where um, there's a 
vulnerability in the in the in the computer or in the uh, the software, and it's unknown. That is, it's not been it's not been patched yet, uh, but the the bad guys have discovered it, and um, and uh, you've, you're exposed. So uh, uh, zero day exploits when they're when they're discovered, uh, companies want to patch those as fast as they can, usually within a day or so. But uh, it's uh, it's a bit of a cat and mouse game of uh, people finding uh, the bad guys finding new exploits and companies trying to patch those but that also goes to say uh, we need to be on top of it as well in making sure that we keep up to date uh, rootkits are also pretty pretty nasty so a rootkit is something which is hidden uh, from the operating system uh, so a lot of the older viruses you could you know you could look at a um, directory of listing and you could see the file or you could see the the service running on the service list and it may be hidden as a legitimate name of the service uh, but at least you could find it with a rootkit it's completely hidden uh, it's hiding itself from the operating system so you can't list it you can't see that the service is running and uh, often these things are very persistent that uh, if you do find them and you try and remove them um, they're fragmented in such a way that they reinstall themselves uh, and so with these things you, you uh, when you have these these problems on, on your computer you you just can't get rid of them uh, and the only well so the, the two things you have to do one is you have to do an offline scan uh, because the scanning within the operating system isn't going to find the problem and the second thing is you uh, you really have to basically remove everything from the computer, uh, re-image it, reinstall the operating system from scratch because that's the only way you can be sure that you've got rid of it and uh, you've got a clean system. Which again goes back to backups. Uh, if you don't have a backup you can't do that. If you do then it's a bit of a burden but at least you can you can recover. Uh, the other thing that's quite common are, are these bot farms. Uh, so a bot is something that's running on your machine and um, it's not just uh, one bot but these guys get these bots running on thousands of machines and they use them for distributed denial of service attacks uh, so you might have somebody like amazon who you know they have a uh, one day of the year um, uh, black friday when they or cyber cyber monday when they want to uh, get most of the business and so the bad guys will get their bot farms to attack that website with a distributed denial of service attack. And those attacks are really coming from individual computers um, in these things we call bot farms. So you could have a bot sitting on your computer. You'd never know about it. Uh, it could even be sitting on uh, these, uh, these uh, inter Internet of Things devices like cameras and uh, uh, I don't know, Raspberry Pis, whatever, and uh, they're just sitting there waiting for to get instructions from the bad guys to go do some harm to somebody. Anyway, so there's lots of bad stuff that could get on your computer. Um, if you take precautions, it won't be there and you don't need to worry about it, but you just need to be aware of uh, these things happen. Uh, so what do we do to, uh, to stop it? Well, the obvious thing is antivirus. And uh, it used to be that uh, we had uh, a lot of antivirus companies that would pro uh, provide um, or sell software, usually on a subscription, and they would look for the viruses and uh, produce updates and scan your computer. Uh, Microsoft has actually done a, a lot over the last few years in really getting on top of uh, a lot of this malware. And uh, nowadays, I would say Windows Defender is sufficient it's built into the operating system and for most people you don't need anything more than the Windows Defend, uh, Defender uh, but you can if you want buy a premium antivirus software and there, there are some reasons you might want to do that uh, it's claimed that uh, you know if everybody used the same antivirus uh, program then um, it's easy to target the things that are um, going to be detected by that uh, that piece of software so it's perhaps good to have competition and variety 
and um, uh, these these programs often do constant scanning um, of incoming traffic over the network and background scanning of the the storage media uh, looking for things that match the signatures of something that's harmful uh, the bad point of that is it's a bit of a performance hog if you've got this thing running and they tend to slow down your machine so I, I don't favor running premium antivirus software um, but you can if you want uh, there are also a lot of um, free antivirus software solutions and I've got a link there to um, uh, an article where you can look at the top ones and down in the bottom corner is uh, is the top recommendations a vast one essentials and Kaspersky I can never pronounce that uh, security cloud uh, so you can use those uh, if you think you have been compromised um, and you think you might have something like a rootkit on your machine the only thing you can do is an offline scan uh, so basically you want to boot up from a uh, CD uh, ROM and uh, and scan K Kaspersky rescue disk is a good thing to do and I've used that a few times uh, checking people's systems um, uh, the the only thing about Kaspersky is they're located in Russian you may have a bit of a trust issue with them but uh, I think they're quite reputable and uh, that's a good way of thoroughly checking a system to make sure it's not uh, not been compromised uh, so you've you're running your antivirus probably windows defender um, but um, windows defender is not necessarily going to be uh, protecting you against uh, all things it's going to protect the operating system but you might well you, you will want to ensure that all of your software is up to date especially things like web browsers uh, so primarily the uh, the uh, Windows Defender is going to protect the operating system, but uh, you may have uh, vulnerabilities in your in, in the browser, which is a um, a large target um, for people who want to get bad things into your your computer. Uh, you'll also get uh, bad things through email, and uh, uh, so uh, lots of lots of things you need to sort of pay attention to and. Uh, uh, make sure you keep up to date uh, so turn on automatic updates where you have them and uh, maybe watch for uh, uh, the news stories about um, uh, browsers getting compromised or, or needing to be updated I'm not sure what network programs was also make sure you buy or get your software from a trusted source obviously uh, the big companies like Microsoft um, are uh, uh, going to be uh, reputable uh, but al also um, a lot of th uh, the open source community going to uh, places like SourceForge and GitHub where that software is going to be peer-reviewed um, the other thing I, I like to do is go to this site uh, alternative2.net um, where um, people will, will rank and review uh, software so if you've got something like I don't know um, think of a piece of software web browser uh, you go here and you can put in something like uh, edge browser and it will rank all the browsers and some of the open source ones and uh, tell you what people think of them so I think it's good to get references uh, but also know where you're getting your references from and uh, it's all about trust uh, what else have we got um, yeah keep your antivirus up to date and oh there are programs that are that will scan your machine and look for things that are out of date and uh, and update them uh, so this one from Livewire uh, free software updater programs um, uh, that's a review of, of programs that do this sort of thing I don't recommend doing that I don't do that um, you can spend a lot of time trying to keep things up to date that you don't use so most of these programs can be set to automatically look for updates when you run them uh, which I think is probably an efficient way of doing it okay so that's software uh, moving on to passwords uh, 
we all talk about the need for strong passwords and uh, so over on the right here this is this is the password generator that I use and uh, this is a strong password which uh, is um, I don't know if you can see the cursor there uh, that's a 12 character basically random set of uppercase lowercase uh, letters numbers and special symbols that would classify that would be classified as a a reasonably strong password something that uh, wouldn't uh, couldn't be compromised by a brute force attack uh, which is what uh, people will do to uh, to try to break into your passwords um, it uh, so it shouldn't be it shouldn't be all I mean the the, the more different types of characters you can get into into it the better so you don't want plain words you don't want things that are just letters you want a mixture of letters and numbers and and, and symbols because the, and uppercase and lowercase because the more different types of letter you have uh, the, the the larger the space uh, that has to be tested to brute force something um, there is this password checker I've, I've used this Kaspersky uh, password kaspersky.com uh, you will find as I did when I tried a few passwords that I've used um, well I, actually it will tell you uh, whether the password has been compromised that is is it on a um, a list of of passwords that are available and it will tell you whether it's a strong password and um, a lot of passwords that I thought were quite strong actually aren't strong and can be uh, at least according to them can be cracked in a fairly short period of time um, I've actually also cracked passwords myself uh, where people have had computers that uh, they uh, couldn't get into uh, for whatever reason I mean legitimately they, they lost the password or forgotten the password I've forgotten my own password um, and um, uh, there are tools you can use to, to crack into computers and um, uh, if you don't have a strong password it's pretty easy uh, so some of the things that uh, that people suggest because you you may not want a password like this that you can't remember yeah <laughs> that's why I don't like uh, that's why I don't like submitting some of these passwords there are passwords I will not submit to them because they are my strong passwords and uh, I know they're strong and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna reveal them uh, and, and in fact uh, I have three classes of, of passwords I use there are passwords which are um, pretty easy <laughs> and they're out there I know they're out there because I've checked them and uh, they're in lists of passwords that have been uh, revealed but I don't care because I go to sites and I'm just registering on a site for something and I don't care whether somebody is going to log in as me or not I mean it doesn't it's not important uh, then there are services I use which are um, I say uh, things where I, I need a stronger password and I will use a strong password like one of these uh, 12 character random letters and um, that's that's good enough and then there are the uh, the financial things yes we'll get on to that in a moment uh, then there are the financial uh, things so my banking information and uh, things like that um, I also use my my uh, Google um, personal account uh, I have a very strong password and I don't write it down even in my password manager and I will never uh, put it on the internet uh, because uh, that is pretty <laughs> it would be a significant loss if that got out in the, into the wild so I've got secret passwords as well as uh, strong passwords um, but um, uh, one of the things you, you probably want to use is a password manager and uh, uh, there are several password managers I use one I use LastPass uh, one password is actually a Canadian company and um, they just got some funding um, uh, they're quite I guess reputable if you don't like commercial password managers um, you can use a um, open source one like KeePass uh, which will do the job uh, one of the advantages of something like LastPass and one password is that the um, you can have it on multiple devices and keep it in, in uh, keep everything synchronized 
and uh, with these password managers i there there are things i can't i can't remember the password uh but these password managers will populate the field so i'll go to a website and um where you would normally enter your username and password the password manager will automatically populate that and then i'll just click log in so they're, they're quite a convenience but you do have to pay for them uh one password i believe you have to pay for um irrespective of how you use it uh last pass uh, have a free version which is limited so with the free version you can only use it on a single type of device so you can de decide whether you want it on your phone or your computer but you can't have it on both and it's not going to synchronize uh, yeah and they're family pans as well so I think these have uh, have a five um, I guess a five unit license so you can have your own own family I would strongly recommend nowadays using a, a password manager um, uh, oh and browsers actually have uh, often the ability to store passwords uh, in them uh, quite often you'll go onto a website and the the browser will say do you want me to save this password uh, the problem with that is if the browser gets compromised you may have lost your password as well uh, so I don't recommend using that uh, I trust password managers but not browsers uh, don't take your password manager password on your monitor okay yes uh, there's the uh, often some of these ideas change with time it used to be that people said you should change your password every three months or whatever uh, nowadays they say you shouldn't do that because if the password's not been compromised there's no point in changing it and um, uh, so the recommendation is you you keep your password unless you know that it's been compromised uh, the other thing is about writing it down uh, it used to be said that you should not write down the password the problem with that is we want you to use strong passwords that you can't remember so you really need to write them down um, you could have a book you don't want to put it on a sticky piece of paper above your computer but you uh, you might have it uh, I mean ideally use a password manager there we go moving along the solution to this whole password problem is what we call multi-factor authentication uh, so the idea is we use more than one factor of protection so a password is one factor and uh, generally we talk about these three different types of factor there's something you know like a password there's something that you have like a physical device or a key uh, or there's something you are like you've got a fingerprint and it's unique so uh, nowadays people are moving towards two-factor authentication uh, a lot of the financial institutions are forcing two-factor authentication and uh, um, some of these two factors are better than others uh, so banks will often use things like email and sms to send you a code that you then have to type in which is an improvement but the problem is uh, your your uh, text or your phone or your email can be compromised uh, so the phone for instance it's quite possible for somebody to call your phone provider and steal your phone number and have it routed to a different phone and then they will log into your bank and get the two fact the second factor the sms the text message and uh, there they have your account so the the ones that i prefer are keys and authenticators so the key is uh is like this one on the screen it's a uh this is the yubi key um uh, also google produce uh, or distribute one called the titan security key uh and uh, these you plug into the usb uh on your uh, computer and you press the button on the top and it injects a cryptographic code into the computer that uh, is sent over the network and it checks it it runs its magic uh, the other type is the authenticator which you see on the right here where you've got um, uh, this will run on your phone or your computer and it will generate every 60 minutes it will generate a new code and again this is synchronized with uh, the service that you're logging into 
so um, even if somebody sees your code it's going to change in a uh, a few seconds um, and uh, um, it's it's not something that can be um, easily compromised the um, I I have some of these keys I also use an authenticator uh, supposedly the keys are intended to be more convenient because you don't have to pull out your phone and read out the number and transcribe it um, but I found that the I, I use my authenticator more than I do the keys uh, because often the sites that have keys um, uh, they provide multiple ways or well, multiple second factors so you can have a key and an authenticated device and um, I just find it more convenient to carry the my phone which has all my um, uh, codes on it uh, so many companies produce these authenticators Google Microsoft uh, LastPass uh, Authy I prefer uh, my my go-to is Authy uh, primarily because yeah Patricia likes Authy <laughs> because um, again I can have it on multiple devices um, and uh, it uh, basically synchronizes with the cloud so that if I want to put it onto a new device I can I can do that um, I like to keep it on multiple devices because if I break my phone I can bring out my tablet and I've got the same authenticator on my tablet um, so uh, those are the ones I prefer but you're free to use any uh, but you should be using one uh, two-factor authentication is good and it really eliminates uh, a lot of the requirements for a strong password you can use a weak password because you've got two-factor authentication and uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's good okay I'll have to stop reading these comments um, also I, I, I notice a lot of people seem to want to log out of things and the problem with logging out is you have to log back in uh, there are lots of things that if if you have your own computer and nobody else is going to use it you don't need to log out and you can just rely on the fact that uh, once you've logged in there's a token stored as a cookie and um, next time you go to the site you'll still be logged in um, so I generally don't log out of things uh, uh, unless I'm forced to like banks force me to log out but things like uh, Google for instance my email I I never log out uh, we need to be aware of scams uh, so uh, scams get to us uh, through some of the methods we talked about email uh, through websites um, social media accounts and the fact that you've got an email from somebody you know or you're getting a uh, a message on uh, Facebook from somebody you know doesn't mean that that is coming from that legitimate source it could be that those accounts have been compromised which is often the case with viruses um, or they have cloned somebody's account so you need to be really skeptical of anything that you receive uh, so basically assume things are not what they seem to be unless you know otherwise um, phishing is a common uh, form of attack where uh, I'm sure most people have seen these by now uh, you get a, a request that looks as though it comes from a legitimate site and they're asking you to log in and confirm uh, information and really what they're doing is just uh, looking for you to reveal information which might be um, account information login password or uh, your credit card information or some some information that they would like to get hold of and uh, a lot of these are really clever um, uh, uh, this is what we call social engineering and uh, I remember a story about uh, somebody on the street uh, offering I don't know uh, $10 or a, I don't know free maybe it was a free card $5 to um, get coffee at Starbucks if you tell me what your password is and people did it I just can't believe it um, but uh, I mean that's that's a pretty basic form of social engineering but uh, 
uh, social engineering is quite a skill and um, we have to uh, have to be aware that there are people out there trying to get our information and we need to protect ourselves uh, I put down this thing about uh, obfuscated links uh, which is a difficult word to say for, for me uh, so you see this one here this is uh, it says HTTP Microsoft.com but if I hover over it it actually says do not go here dot bad um, the fact that you see links that look legitimate in an email or a, on a website um, um, it may not be the site that you were expecting and those links may not be valid and you um, you have to do a bit of due diligence to confirm that you're you, you're going to the correct site so if you get a, a message from uh, your bank and they even know your account number because that's being revealed somehow um, and they're asking you to re re-authenticate don't click on the link go to the the bank website and do it the way you usually do it uh, because at least that's more likely to be uh, the legitimate site than something that's been sent to you in a message uh, so there's there's quite a skill to identifying uh, some of these scams and in fact i i think the banks don't really do a good service because there are, i've seen things that come from banks that look like phishing but in fact they were legitimate uh they well i don't know it's a big problem uh there are tests you can you can run there's a link here to one one test uh, and there are others where you'll get a 10 um uh, images of websites and you are to say whether or not you think it's phishing or whether it's legitimate and you'll find that uh, you're not very good at detecting what is legitimate and what is phishing uh, be very cautious okay moving along network safety uh, okay so network safety this is uh, basically people getting onto your network um, make sure you're using a firewall which is not a big problem for most of us because we usually have a router on the front end and a router is inherently uh, a firewall uh, but don't put your computer directly on the modem i don't know nowadays maybe um, the carriers are putting uh, more protection on but it used to be a case where you could put your your computer on the raw internet feed and within about three minutes it would be compromised uh, make sure your Wi-Fi password is strong and you're using a strong uh, method like WPA2 uh, because weaker methods and weak passwords can be uh, uh, compromised pretty quickly uh, don't allow ro remote management to your network uh, think about who you're going to let onto your network if you've got visitors coming into the house maybe set up a guest network uh, know what's on your network so what I do I've got uh, over the right here um, this is I keep a, a list of every device that's on my network and I allocate a fixed address uh, in the range of 0 to 100 uh, subnet on the subnet uh, so anything that's not anything that's got an address more than 100 I know is not normally on my network and it's easy to spot um, it's good practice to know what's on your network and uh, pay attention to it from time to time uh, scanning external ports so there's a tool here called shields up and you can run a scan on your from the outside onto your network and you want all of your ports to be stealth that is it's like they don't exist you don't exist on the net on the uh, on uh, on the internet uh, you only exist in the sense that you're making requests out to a server and getting a response back uh, so you can test your ports and uh, ideally make sure they're closed and in stealth mode practice safe browsing this is this is important um, uh, the, when something gets into your network it's probably because you've allowed it in and you've done something that was not um, that was risky basically uh, so uh, what I say is stay away from bad neighborhoods just like I wouldn't walk and 
down the east side of Vancouver at night. Uh, there are parts of the internet I will not go to, at least not with an open browser. Uh, so um, be cautious about where you go. Uh, I One of the things I used to spend a lot of time with students uh, at colleges with is browser hijacking because they didn't practice safe browsing and they went to places and clicked on links and accepted things and the browsers got hijacked and it was a complete mess. It wasn't particularly harmful, it was just messy and uh, it took a long time to, uh, to fix. Um, yeah, I'll... Uh, Oh, if you if there are things that you you think are suspicious content, you can use something called a sandbox. And there's a there's a tool called Sandboxy that makes that easy. Again, going back to the students, they were su submitting assignments, and I don't know that their computers are safe. And so I want to make sure that when I open one of their assignments, which is a file, um, I'm doing it in a in a protected environment, which is a sandbox. So you, there are things you can do to protect yourself. Uh, don't give out your credit card, uh, don't save your credit card. So when I make a purchase, I try not to have my credit card saved because if those sites get compromised, then they have my credit card and it's a bit of an inconvenience. Um, and don't give out private information. There are tools you can use like parental controls. Um, uh, but there's, there, there are, uh, you can, you can register uh, or you can use a, um, a domain name service that you can uh, select what things you want to be allowed into your network uh, so you can um, you can screen out things like adult themes and drugs and gambling uh, and make sure that those things don't uh, aren't visible to your machine and it's not just that uh, you know you might go to bad sites but um, there are people who um, uh, register sites that have similar names to common sites you know like google.com they'll uh, people will will have spell spelling errors and go to a site thinking they're going to google.com but it's actually some other site because they've mistyped it uh, a good example of this is michael campbell used to do a uh, radio show on saturday uh, called money talks and he had a site called moneytalks.net and there's another site called moneytalks.com which was rather unsavory that uh, people ended up at Data management. Uh, okay, so I'm going to rush through this. Uh, uh, yeah, protect your data. Protect your physical device. Don't let other people on it. Don't lose it. <laughs> and if you lose it, make sure you can either get the device back or destroy the data remotely. Um, so um, this goes to things like uh, disk drives. If you if you get disk drives that break, don't throw them in the trash. Destroy them. Um, don't leave your devices unattended. Uh, always have a, a, a lock. I have a screen lock on my computer, which is on my desktop, which is chained to my desk. I've got uh, screen locks with passwords on my phone and my tablet, because if I lose it, I want to make sure my data is going to be safe. And I have them registered. So using Google Find My Device, I can locate it. And if necessary, I can destroy it. And last slide is on VPNs. So VPNs used to be useful. Uh, when people went into coffee shops, they'd use a VPN because they didn't want people sniffing their traffic over the public Wi-Fi. Nowadays, a lot of the um, use of, uh, of uh, services is encrypted and it's safe anyway. So the, the, the value of VPNs is really diminished, but a lot of companies are selling VPNs as safe online protection, but it's really not necessary anymore. And there's no real need to buy VPNs unless you want to use it for other purposes like um, changing your point of presence. Uh, so you have to think about VPNs are only protecting you on that link to the exit point of the VPN. Um, so if you're on a wireless network, yeah, it can protect you on the wireless network, but it's not protecting you on the internet because the traffic's still going out over the internet. Um, but nowadays, 
you'll see uh, these things uh, on your browser. You'll have a lock showing that you're using an encrypted connection, or you'll have something showing it's not secure because it's it's not encrypted. Uh, so you should be aware it's fairly visible whether or not you're protected. And the last slide, top 10 checklist. So these are the things you're going to do when you leave tonight or tomorrow. You're going to set up automate, automated back work, backup. You're going to check your You've got antivirus operating uh, on your operating system. You're going to perform your software updates. You're going to get a password manager and you're going to use two-factor authentication where possible. You're going to watch out for scams, ensure the network is secure. That is your, uh, your local network and your Wi-Fi. You're going to check your internet ports. You're going to practice safe browsing and you're going to protect your physical devices to make sure nobody gets their hands on them.